Today we're going to tear down and figure out what went wrong with an Econ Blackout Buddy. This is a nightlight with a built-in flashlight that comes on automatically if the power goes out. And this one has stopped working. So let's take this thing apart and see what went wrong. Well, this is something I shouldn't even be looking at, but this belongs to my mother-in-law and it broke down and uh, she asked if I could look at it. It's a nightlight. I guess it's got a power failure. You keep it plugged in and it turns on in the dark and it turns off when there's light that hits it and if the power goes out it turns on as a as a flashlight right it's a rechargeable flashlight it's not working so it could have a battery problem on this or it could be something in the charge circuit so let's take it apart and see why it's not working gotta get the screws out first they are microscopic little Torx ones, which I don't have a bit that will fit it, but uh, my modified screwdriver sure will. So just give me a second to get the screws out and we'll open this thing up and see what's inside it. You see, my little modified filed down screwdriver, it'll open anything. Well, as you can see, there's actually quite a bit inside this unit. Let's just see if that fuse has popped. Because uh, if that fuse is popped, that'll explain why it's not working. And I think that's a pretty good indication that the fuse is blown. Why did it blow? Could have had a power surge. We'll check the diodes and see if the diodes are popped. I don't see any short of diodes here. Let's check them all. So the diodes are not shorted. But the fuse is definitely blown. Just take a look at what size this fuse is. It looks to be a, a 0.5 amp at 250 volts. Hmm, I wonder if I'm going to have something in that size. We'll take the old one out just by melting some solder around here just to heat it up. Because it's just a surface mounted type of uh, fuse. So the fuse popped, so there, there had to be probably a reason for that. It could have been a power surge, but I'm thinking that there's a 1 mega ohm resistor here, and underneath here I think there's probably a capacitor dropper. So let's just take the board out and see if the capacitor dropper, which is what's going to limit the current, because this, the, the diodes are okay. But let's just take a look and see whether the capacitor dropper, I think there's probably one underneath here, is, uh, is bad. Because you see, I look, I look on here, and I can see discoloration. Oh yeah, yeah, toasty. Capacitor went toasty. Well, let's replace it. There's a the little battery there that gets charged up. Let's just change this little capacitor and uh, see whether this thing will work. Yeah, let's see what size this thing is. 105 at 250 volts. I bet you I've got one. Okay, I got another one here the same size. One microfarad, 250 volts. We will mount this one a little bit larger, but it should fit in here no problem. We'll mount it on this side of the board and uh, let's see whether I can put power to this thing and uh, see if it'll work. There we go. Get down there. That should fit in there, no problem. Okay, now I gotta find a small fuse that I can put in place of this one half an amp fuse so let me go and look and see whether I've got one I'm gonna 
I'm, I'm going to actually look in some of my old uh, um, compact fluorescent ballasts because they typically had a small fuse like that, like about that size. So let me see if I can find one in an old CFL or LED ballast. Okay, I got another fuse the same. I'm going to mount the circuit board back onto the, uh, the chassis. We'll put the screws back in here. Everything looks like it's going to fit. And then we'll test it out and see whether it's going to work. It should. Everything looks like it will fit in here. We'll find out pretty quick here. Get the plug open and plug it in and see what happens. I don't have my power energized yet. Okay. It's either going to go up in flames or it's going to work. Well, is it on? I don't know if it's turned on or not. I think that's, that's on there, okay. So. Just see if there's any voltage getting to the battery to charge it up. This thing's energized now, so I gotta kinda watch what I'm doing here, cause otherwise I could get a nasty shock. 0.5 volts. Okay, and are we getting any DC coming off of this? Okay, that's the AC side there. I'm just looking at the uh, AC side is over here. So let's just put this into AC voltage and we'll see whether we've got any AC power getting to the diodes. Oh, I see a 10K resistor that goes between the DC side here and over to where the battery is. This is a 10K resistor here and it is open. So let's just change out that little 10K resistor and see if that'll make it work. This is the resistor here. You can see it's kind of bulged a bit. It's open. So we'll just pull this one out and replace it. That actually looks like a 1K resistor, not a 10K. It's um, looking at it. It's, it's gotten hot. At, Band is not orange, it's red. So brown, black, red, that's a 10K. Let me find a 10K resistor. Okay, I also found this uh, 5.1 volt zener diode was shorted as well. I might explain why the uh, voltage was a little low. Let's see whether we get any voltage now. Almost time to give up on this thing. It's more of a challenge now to see why it's not working. Oh, am I connecting? It should be connected. Let's just see if we've got any charging voltage to the battery. 4.3 volts. Yep, battery is charging. So, ah, that works. Well, I got it going, but the uh, photocell is not working properly. It's not like it should go off when there's light and come on when it's dark, and it seems to be just coming on as soon as it's turned on. If it's turned off, it's going off, but the light is staying on uh, all the time. The uh, night light portion is staying on all the time. But the flashlight does come on if the power goes out, the emergency light comes on. It's just that as it sits right now, the night light runs all the time, which may not be a bad thing. Anyway, um, yeah, dropper, capacitor, um, 500 milliamp fuse, and that resistor, the 10K resistor. Oh, and a uh, a 5.1 Zener diode. Hardly worth it. But uh, it was interesting to see what was in here and what went wrong with it. It was just kind of done for a challenge to see what actually failed. And it was the cap blew up. That's about all, about all I'm going to do on this thing. Thanks for watching.